What you're about to see are excerpts from various episodes of Dusty's Treehouse, a four to nine year old oriented half hour children's show which looks at life and living from various perspectives. With humor, pathos, and genuine affection, Dusty's Treehouse sorts through real problems that the viewer is apt to be confronted with in his daily life. It also presents the arts and sciences in an entertaining way and asks the viewer to involve himself, take a closer look at the world, and increase his sensitivity to it. Let me introduce you to the characters, Maxine, Scooter, and Stanley. Each was running for president of the United Treehouse so viewers might better understand campaigning and election. Thank you, dear. <laughs> well, of course, it's perfectly clear to all of you that I, Maxine Crow, am the only one who can handle this tough job. And I really think it's dumb that I have to tell you why I'm so good. But I promised I wouldn't. Here we go. Number one, I'll organize a treehouse by giving the same amount of work to Stanley, Scooter, and Dusty. And I'll just sit around and watch them do it. <laughs> Make sure it gets done. Number two, more corn in everybody's diet. I mean, everything's going to be corny around here. <laughs> Number three, I promise always to be in the treehouse when you need me. But don't make it too early, because I need my sleep in the morning. And not too late, because I go out at night. <laughs> Number four, <laughs> I promise you I'll be the best president of the treehouse ever, because I'll be the only president the treehouse has ever had. So when you vote, vote for the best. Vote for Maxine for president. Write Max on your postcard. Put a nose in the treehouse. Don't be a chicken. Vote for a crow who is in the nose. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to hear from our next candidate for president, Mr. Scooter Squirrel. Yay. 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 Give your speech. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to talk as long as the last speaker with the big banana colored beak. Just let me tell you why you should vote for me and hire me to be president of the United Treehouse. First of all, I'm always honest almost most of the time, sort of. Yeah. And um, I do all my duties around the treehouse unless I have to play baseball. And I always help keep everything clean unless I forget. And I've always been a good, loyal friend to all of you and all of my family here in the treehouse. And I always help someone like Stanley or Dusty when they have a problem, unless it's arithmetic. Mm. And I guess that's about all. So when you vote, would you please vote for Scooter for president? Thank you. Thank you, Scooter. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Stanley. Well, um, I'm just a little guy, and I don't know too much, but I am always willing to learn, you know, the life to help everybody if I could. And I sure love everybody a lot, and I really try hard to make a really good president. Now, um, I don't tell stories too good, but I can learn to do that. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Stanley. Stanley. The fact that people have problems, curiosities, emotional feelings. The treehouse dwellers are no exception, as you'll see in the following excerpts. This episode addressed itself to the concept of one man's trash may be another man's treasure. Maxine explains through this originally composed song. like much to you. It's old and dry and yellow and a little moldy too. But this old cob means an awful lot to me. What looks like junk holds hunks of memories. I think of another Maxine I used to know. It's a moth-eaten ear that's a souvenir of when I was a baby crow. It makes me remember with a sentimental sob. And so my favorite thing is this old... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was that much of a treasure to you. Oh, take care. Come on. I'm sorry. Well, I... I guess I, I understand better now about that, that old hat of yours. Well, you know, there, there are things that have sentimental value that bring back a lot of memories, and I guess you want to keep them. You know, one person's trash may be another person's treasure. Dusty's Treehouse has its lighter moments, as evidenced in this dream sequence where Scooter discovers the pros and cons of wishful thinking. 
<laughs> wish you were a corn cob. <laughs> Bet you thought that was gonna work, didn't you? <laughs> Bet you thought I was gonna turn into a corn cob. <laughs> well, you were wrong. <laughs> no, I wasn't. You mean? Mm hmm. You're a corn cob. I'm gonna call you Colonel Corn from now on. Ow! Oh! Ow, oh, you. All right, wise guy. I wish you were a walnut. <gasps> Maxine? Yes? Did it? Yes, it worked. <laughs> now you're a walnut. Whee! Hey, what's this great big sandwich doing on the craft table? Come on, great big sandwich. You're supposed to be a craft, not supposed to be on the craft table. Stanley? Who said that? I did, Scooter. Where are you, Scooter? I'm down here. I look like a walnut. Is that really you? Uh-huh. What happened? Maxine wished me into a walnut. That's because you wished me into a corn cob. Gee whiz, you're a corn cob and you're a walnut. Yeah, what are you going to do about it, Stanley? Ha-ha, <laughs> I'm going to laugh. <laughs> well, I expected something more sensitive out of you. Yeah, but it's funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. Well, I don't. I wish, I wish, I wish Stanley was an apple. <laughs> I'm an apple. I'm an apple. You could put out Beatle records. No, no. I don't want to be an apple. Oh. Hi, everyone. Gee. Uh, have any of you seen Scooter, Maxine, or Stan? I've been looking all over for him, and I haven't been able to find him anywhere. Oh, I left some groceries out here. Here's a pretty yes. fix you've gotten this into. I, I wish Dusty would disappear. I'll put these things away in the cabinet and be right back with a story. Putting things away where they belong was the subject of this episode. Stanley speculates... I just got to thinking, what? what would it be like around here if nobody ever cleaned up and everything just cumulated and did up? You mean accumulated and just stacked up yeah. pile after pile? Wow, I can just picture it. things away, you know. That's what I said. Yeah, just, just keep moving it around and eventually you find it. On a more serious note, Dusty's Treehouse tackled the subject of adoption. Here he explains the meaning of it. Like you, now, now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. I think I ought to explain, okay? If you'll just calm down long enough and let me explain so you'll better understand what adoption is. And maybe you'd like to listen in, because maybe you have a brother or sister, or maybe you were adopted yourself, and you might like to know what adoption is. Now, I'll tell you where I found both of you, okay? And how you happen to be here. Okay. Well, here's the story. I got this great big treehouse. You can see how big it is. And I was here all by myself. I mean, nothing. Nobody. Nobody to talk to. Nothing happening. And I thought, gee, I really feel lonely here. So then I thought, gee, it would really be nice if I had some company. So I was walking out in the forest, and I thought to myself, you know what would really be nice is if I had a squirrel. Yes. So I went down to the Dowdy Downs Adoption Agency, where they have squirrels. And I looked, and there were whole bunches of little squirrels. In fact, I wanted to take them all home. They all looked so cute. But there was this one particular little squirrel, a little blue one, who was jumping up and down, and he was really just carrying on. And he was really so, so cute. And I said, say, I'll tell you what, I would really like to have that little squirrel that's really jumping around like that. And they said, fine. And so I brought you home, and you've been here ever since. And I've loved you very much ever since. And that was and me. Real. That was you. Yeah. Right. And you chose me over all those other that's squirrels, right. huh? That's right. Well, I'm kind of special then. That's right. Extra special, because I got a chance to select you specifically. Here, Dusty and Stanley exchange thoughts on the meaning of love. Ah, oh, that was 
was really pretty. You know, I just never thought about love before. I just sort of used it a lot. That's true. You do use it a lot. And maybe you didn't realize that there were so many kinds of love. Even for the goldfish on rainy days. That's my favorite part. <laughs> yes. Tell you what, I have an idea. Why don't you find Scooter and Maxine, and why don't you think about what each of you think love is, okay? Okay, we'll have Love Day in the treehouse. That's okay. right. Okay. Bye. Bye. A very popular component of Dusty's treehouse is the story segment. Dusty draws from the world's treasury of children's literature and presents dramatized versions of old favorites as well as exciting new ones. Here is an excerpt from the treehouse version of Three Wishes. Sausages were on the end of your nose. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, what have I done? The sausages are on the end of my oh, nose. No, no, don't worry, Martha. The sausages are on the end of my nose and they'll never come off. Oh, 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 One, oh. two, oh. three. Oh. What are we going to do? Well, I, I could cut them off. But they are a part of me. It would be like cutting off my nose. Well, that leaves only one other choice. You, you mean? Yes. We'll have to use the last wish and wish them off. Well, if that's the case, we, we wish, wish these sausages, sausages were off my her nose. nose. A six-foot statue was used to help dramatize Dusty's reading of this classic. Well, today's story is a very, very beautiful one. And it's about love and unselfishness. It's called The Happy Prince and it was written by Oscar Wilde. High above the city on a tall column stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of gold. For eyes, he had two bright sapphires and a large ruby glowed on his sword hilt. He was very much admired indeed. He's as beautiful as a weathercock, remarked a town councillor. Only not quite so useful, he added. He looks just like an angel, said the charity children as they came out of the cathedral. How do you know, said the mathematical master. You've never seen one. Ah, but we have in our dreams, answered the children. And the mathematical master frowned and looked very severe as he did not approve of children dreaming. During another episode, Dusty's Treehouse presented an original musical puppet production of the world's most famous fairy tale, Cinderella. Oh dear, <laughs> how silly of me. <laughs> Go, patches and tatters, too long have you stayed. In satin and gold is our princess arrayed. Oh my. Oh, how beautiful. But I'm still barefoot. Oh, well, dearest, I don't do shoes. Oh, but I can't. Oh, here, I'll loan you mine. Oh, but take good care of them. They're my best crystal. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, my dear. Now, hurry along and enjoy the ball. Your Highness, the carriage awaits. Couldn't be more excited if I were going myself. <laughs> oh. oh, there is one thing I almost forgot. You have to be home by midnight, or when the clock strikes twelve, my magic will cease, and all these pretty things will be as they were before. All except the shoes, of course, and you can just throw those in the bougainvillea. I'll pick them up in a day or two. I understand, and thank you again. Drive on, coachman! <laughs> yeah!
And now I must be on my way for I'm stardust, I'm moonbeam, my magic is true. And maybe someday I'll come calling on you. Playing all the characters, Dusty does a dramatic reading of the old American folktale about the sea, Storm Along. The sails were full, but the ship stood squat still in the mid-ocean. Suddenly, one of Stormy's shipmates turned pale and shouted, A Kraken! A Kraken's got a hold of the keel! What's a Kraken? Oh, I hardly dare to tell you that. It's something like an octopus, only it has more arms. It's like a crab, but it bites ten times as hard. It has jaws that can snap a mast in two. It can turn a ship into splinters and hold it standing still in a typhoon. It's the fiercest, cruelest, most powerful, pitiless monster an able-bodied seaman can ever meet. Having a nightmare was the treehouse topic and story on one episode. What you are about to see are excerpts from the musical comedy Dusty's Nightmare. As a partial result of eating two greasy hamburgers before going to bed, Dusty has this bad dream. Soon surmises, nothing goes according to plan. So better prepare for surprises when you visit nightmare, when you visit nightmare, when you visit nightmare land. In funny clothes. And dripping wet, too. Well, I, I just swam ashore. Ah, that oh, explains uh, yes, the wet. If he was you know, swimming ashore, you'll get I was, very wet. I was wondering. You know, yes. Yes. Well, I, I lost my way. I'm sort of lost. I was trying to find my way back to the treehouse. I don't suppose you would know how to get there, would you? Well, we don't, but Sonia would. Well, who's Sonia? Darling, I'm Sonia. <laughs> Fortune telling, magic spelling, hot bandana, setting sash. If you want to see the future, cross a gypsy's palm with cash. Hey! Well, Sonia, it seems that I've left the treehouse with, without my wallet. Mm, another dead bee. Never mind, darling. You have groovy face. I give you sample reading. Maybe you come back when Mama gives allowance, huh? <laughs> All <laughs> Let right. me see your palm. Oh, okay. That's a very spooky palm. Did you know well, that? Hey, well, those are my knuckles. My palm <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> Haven't been doing this too long. I see. Oi. Uh, oh. What's the matter? What's the matter? Who does your manicuring, darling? That's a mess. I've never seen anything that... Oh, that's nice. I do it myself. No, we don't... Uh, I see. What do you see? I see a great, green, fairy creature with very bad breath. You see all that in my palm? No, darling, he's standing right behind you. <laughs> Come back when you can stay longer, darling. Cute kid. Tree trips are an important and popular part of Dusty's treehouse. During this portion of the program, Dusty takes viewers on an interesting behind-the-scenes tour of manufacturing plants and professional offices. Here we visited a Pepsi-Cola bottling plant to uncover the hows of mixing, bottling, and canning cola.
here's where they're all washed with super hot water. the other side after their back. On another episode, our curiosity took us to a dinnerware factory where we found out how cups, bowls, and plates were manufactured. Now let's watch and see what happens with the plates. They drop little discs of clay down. Now we're going to see both bowls and plates. That's a bowl. trimmed off just the same way. It just squeezes the clay down and then trims it. And out the other end come the bowls and the plates. See? Now those plates are upside down. You can see that. The plates are upside down. Many have been to the dentist, but few have seen what he does up close. So Dusty took his viewers to a dental office, where everyone had an opportunity of seeing how teeth are examined and cleaned and cavities filled. Now, sometimes decay forms in teeth, and sometimes little repair work has to be done, because a cavity forms, or like a little teeny hole in the tooth, and it has to be filled in very carefully, and this is how it's done. Now, these are pretend teeth. These are not real teeth. They're made out of ivory, and he's just going to show us how it's done with this pretend tooth. He's drilling a hole with this little itty bitty tiny drill. And then he fills it with what they call amalgam. And it has silver in it and some other metals. Now watch. This is a little tiny tool to tap it down very tight. So he's filling just a little pretend tooth. Since the program's inception, Dusty's Treehouse has encouraged an interest and curiosity in everything and anything. The following is a sampling of a few things the Treehouse gang delved into. What is the digestive tract? How does it work? Here was the researched answer, Treehouse style. The stomach. The little intestine. Often Dusty asks viewers to put on their thinking caps for a round of driddles. Using extreme close-up photography and rhyming clues, the audience is invited to figure out what the featured item is. I be an oven where mother will bake some cookies or pie or chocolate cake. Well, it looks sort of like an oven, but it isn't. Okay, next clue. This is your last clue. You can use me to cut up some cheese for a treat, or I'll help to prepare food that babies can eat. Now, if you haven't guessed it, here's what it is. For baking, for cooking, I shred and I slice, a grater's my name, and I make food look nice. Here a little dusty philosophy is illustrated using glassware and milk. And if you remember a while back, I brought these glasses on, and I was mentioning that each one has a personality of its own, like here's a tall, skinny guy, and here's a short, fat guy, and here's a little short girl, and here's a medium-sized boy, and they're all different. But the thing that really impressed me was 
that though they're all different, this little gal, this little chubby fella, this little fella with a bow tie, and Tex here. Yeah, Tex. And this little skinny guy. And this skinny guy. Whoops. The important thing is, no matter how tall you are, how short you are, or how fat you are, it's what's inside that counts. The history of light was featured during one episode. It began with the sun and ended with the light bulb. Here's an excerpt. Then man invented the candle for light. The first candles were made out of tallow, which smoked badly and smelled terribly. But as time went by, they were improved, and they're still used today as decoration in all different sizes and shapes and all different colors. Years passed. And finally, man had another idea. He extracted a special fuel from an oil called kerosene and invented the kerosene lamp. As you can see, the kerosene lamp was much better because it had a little chimney that was made of glass and it was on top to keep the flame from blowing out. And best of all, it had an adjustable wick that allowed man to turn up the light to make it brighter and turn it down to make it dimmer. During the craft segment of the show, Dusty demonstrates how everyone can be creative with paints, pencil, paper, and a little patience. Here Dusty explains how his audience can make their own bass fiddle out of a box, string, and a broom. They're terrific because they really hold things tightly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, put it back here like so, and I'm going to pull hard on it and watch what happens. See? And if you put it over in the corner, like so, and hold it down, don't get your hand near the nail, hold it down near the bottom, you can make different notes by bending it. See, now I'm stretching it one way, pushing back on it. Now, if it's too loose, you won't hear anything, so you have to make it tight. And that's your bass fiddle made out of a box, and that's a new use for something old. We'd like to close with this excerpt from the adoption episode. We think it best summarizes the genuine feelings and relationships we like to share with all our viewers. Well, there's something I'd like to tell you, too. Okay. Well, <clears throat> what it is is if I had to pick up anybody in the whole world to be adopted by, mm -hmm. I'd pick yeah. you. Oh, thanks a lot, Stanley. I appreciate that. Hmm. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Oh, goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. Ah, oh, Stanley. <laughs> Da 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 da